Take apart the iBook G4 by MacRecycling.com. You will need the following tools to completely disassemble the iBook. A pair of needle nose pliers, a properly grounded ESD wrist strap, a small Phillips head and flathead screwdriver, a Torx driver with assorted sized heads, a black stick or two, and you will find a plastic pick will come in handy as well. Remove the battery by turning the latch clockwise like so and lift the battery from the battery bay. Turn the iBook right side up and slide the two latches shown here toward the front to release the keyboard. Gently lift up at the top of the keyboard like so. If the keyboard doesn't easily lift up, you might need to release the lock just above the number 6 key by turning it 180 degrees. Notice the location of the connector for the airport antenna. Use a black stick to pry the connector out of the Airport Extreme card. The Airport Extreme card is held in place by this clip. Pry the clip out of the slot on each side like so. With the clip removed from the slots, Remove the Airport Extreme card by grasping the plastic tab as shown here. Remove these four screws to remove the RAM shield. Be careful not to damage the antenna cable when doing so. Pull the antenna clear of the clip. Gently pull the ram shield up and out. The ram is held in place by a clip on each side. Use a black stick to gently pull the clips back like so and the ram will pop up. Remove the ram, noting its orientation so it can be properly reinstalled. This is where the keyboard connects to the logic board. Grasping the cable firmly, gently lift up on it to remove it from the logic board. Remove the following eight screws from the top case. The screw at this location is covered by a small magnet. Use a small flathead screwdriver to pry the magnet from the top of the screw. Turn the iBook over and remove the following screws in the battery bay. When you remove the bottom case in a few minutes, notice this small tab. You'll need to gently lift the narrow piece of plastic over this. Take care as it is easily broken. Here is a close-up of the two screws at the battery connector. These are the two springs with caps at the battery connector. Next, remove the three feet and the three screws securing the bottom case. The two long screws shown here were removed from the edge near the back and the short screw from near the center. The feet can be removed by first using a small flathead screwdriver to pry them up like so. Once each foot is removed, remove the screw underneath it. Lift the remaining piece out as shown here. 
To remove the bottom case, you will need to insert a black stick in this seam and move it completely around the iBook to separate the bottom case. Insert the flat edge of the black stick near the corner of the battery bay like so, with the black stick angled down. As you run the black stick along the seam, you will hear popping as the catches inside the bottom case release. This is normal, but take care as a plastic case can break easily. Continue to run the black stick along the seam by the I.O. ports. And continue along the same seam along the back. While working the black stick along the edges, this plastic piece has popped back over the tab, so we'll need to release it. As you work the black stick around the case, gently separate the bottom case as you go. Continue separating the bottom case, working your way toward the optical drive. This seam just above the optical drive is separated differently. With the other three sides separated, gently lift up, but do not yet remove, the bottom case like so, running the flat edge of the black stick along the seam to separate the case. This will work best if you hold the black stick at a 90 degree angle to the case. You may hear several popping sounds as the case releases. Once the case is fully released, lift it up and away. Remove these four screws from the bottom shield. Carefully remove the bottom shield, taking care not to bend it. Looking at the bottom, notice the fan and its connector on the logic board, the DC inboard here at the top left, and its connector on the logic board the sleep light in its connector, and the hard drive connector. Remember the two springs of the battery connector? These are easily overlooked and thus easily lost. Here's a close-up of the spring just removed. 